Gotta go. You gotta see things. See new faces and brand new things. Gotta go play. What's up everyone, my name's Tom and welcome to TechStream. Today, thanks to the guys over at Razer, we're taking a look at their new Huntsman mechanical gaming keyboard. First of all though, as always, let's roll on that intro. So, as I've said, what we're taking a look at here is the new Razer Huntsman Opto Mechanical Gaming Keyboard. I've done a little bit of work with Razer in the past. I've got, uh, I've done a look at their Cyanosa. I've taken a look at their Naga Trinity. I've actually got a Black Widow on my desk at the moment. This here, though, is their new Huntsman, and I must say, we're going to start off, and I'm going to say I actually really like this. Now, I will say, as always, peripheral reviews. There is a lot of personal opinion because feel as in switches and things like that, that is very much personal preference. But anyway, let's go through it. So this is the Huntsman. This is the packaging. On the back, it does have a lot of info about their fancy switches, but we will get into that a little bit later because the switches on this are quite special. The it, This is just a standard 104 key keyboard, full size. There are no sort of additional media buttons or anything like that. It's just a nice, straightforward, quite plain looking, especially for Razer, keyboard. Okay, it's got lots of RGB, but we'll get onto that a little bit later on. So, the keyboard itself, it's actually a plastic sort of chassis with a, I believe it is aluminium top plate. It's a nice, rigid keyboard, no creaks or flex or anything when you're playing on it. It does have a fixed six foot braided cable. There is actually a little cable tie and everything included on that. If we flip it over, we've got four, six rubber pads in total when you've got it sort of flat on your desk. And it does sit very, flat is definitely flat. There's very little sort of rise in the keys. And then you do actually have two options for a medium rise or a high rise. I must admit, for me personally, it's not actually quite high enough of a rise, which is unusual, because I've normally found razors to have quite a bit of tilt on them, shall we say. But that's about it for adjustability. Not a massive amount, but there is at least an option. It's not just flat or up. It all works nice and easily. So 104 key keyboard. We'll start off with a little bit about the keyboard. There are a few uh, extras that you can do with this keyboard. We do have a function button. When we press the function button, the first thing that happens is all of the other lights go off and only the buttons that work whilst the FM button is pressed are illuminated. Quite cool. So you do have some media keys for your volumes, your playbacks, your pause. You have a macro button, a game mode button, a volume button down and a sleep button. And what also happens, Razer have got this thing called hypershift. What happens is uh, a, the standard key is function, but you press function key, you will then effectively have a complete second keyboard. So although this particular keyboard has no macro keys built in, you can press function and any of these, and it's, it's a bit like pressing like control and V. Um, you can press function and anything, and you can assign a macro to that. Macros um, are all done via the Synapse software. You can set, sign it to just be a, a simple macro. You can actually set it up to do sort of software orientated things. The Synapse software is fantastic. So overall the initial experience has been quite good. What we're going to do now, we're going to get into the switches because that is the main part of this keyboard. Now if I pop off just a few keycaps so that we can see plenty, there we go. Now the keycaps, they do use a standard cherry stem but these are very different to everything else. You can probably see a little bit. So these are cherries, uh, cherries, they're not cherries, these are Razer's new opto mechanical switches. So rather than a normal mechanical switch where it's a break in electrical contact to make a key switch, this works in a very different way. And it's a bit like the Gigabyte one I reviewed a while ago. This uses light. It is an optical switch. So what it is, at the moment, in this position, there's a light beam and it's coming out of a, of a transmitter and it's hitting the switch. Okay, you press the switch down the light then passes all the way across to a receiver. That is your key switch. Quite clever. Um, but that's not, as much as that is cool, what I really like about these switches, now these are sort of clicky clicky, they're very much like cherry 
blues or razors green switches from the past. But what I really like about these is A, they have a nice wide frame which results in very little key wobble. There's a lot of support for the, for the actual keycap and every single switch here, apart from this one which I've managed to knock off, has actually got its own stabilizer bar. Now stabilizer bars are something normally only seen on long keys. So shift, space will have stabilizers. Every single key on this board has its own little stabilizer and that results in almost no noticeable keycap wobble. Something that bugs me quite a lot with a lot of keys is you find you have a massive amount of wobble and it's just like they, they feel a bit cheap but Razor's inclusion of, I put that on the wrong one, but you get what I mean. Razor's inclusion, oh, you can see the difference here. Now there's no, this stabilizer bar's actually fallen off from me pulling the keycap off. Quite a bit of wobble. If we then stick, if we can find the right one, the one above it on, now this one has it, and there's a lot less wobble just from those stabilizer bars. It's a really, really nice inclusion. It would help if I do put them the right way around. That's still the wrong way around, but whatever. Um, but yeah, the, the stabilizer bars make a big difference into the build quality and the feel of the keyboard. Like rattly keys just feel horrible. They feel cheap. Um, this isn't a cheap keyboard, it is 150 pound, but those stabilize you're paying for things like Razer to go into the research to do stabilizer bars on every single key. It's fantastic. I'm really, really impressed with it. Now, you may not like sort of clicky clicky tactile switches. And I will say one thing I'm not that I not that is a down part of this uh, keyboard. It's one of the things of open framed keyboards, i.e. open plated like this, is they do echo a little bit. But it comes with that style of keyboard. They all seem to do it. Um, it's not the end of the world. I don't really notice. You only hear it if you sort of bash. And I'm not a basher. Um, but there we go. So that's the actual keyboard. And now you're thinking 150 quid for just 104 key keyboard razor tax. Okay, yeah. You do have a little bit of razor tax. But do you know what you always seem to forget about? That thing behind me there, that is Razer's Synapse software. Now, I'm not going to go into the ins and outs of how to use that because I could do an hour-long video on using that on its own. Um, but Razer's Synapse software is amazing. I've played around with keyboards now for pretty much every major brand. And I don't care what anybody says, the Synapse software is the most reliable. I've only ever had it crash once, and that was due to com a conflict with another person's RGB software. And it does everything, and it is just easy to use. I've pulled up some people's software recently, and it, honestly, it looks like a bit of software from 1999. Synapse software is just modern, it's sleek, it's got a really nice to use user interface. And even though I've got two RGB Razer keyboards plugged in at the moment, it doesn't bat an eye to that, not a problem. I can actually have two of these plugged in at the same time, and I could have this just as a macro keyboard if I wanted. All done through Synapse, no issues. Same with the mouse, and you can connect Philips Hue bulbs, you can actually connect other people's hardware to it as well. Um, and it just works really, really well. So I think, yeah, the keyboard itself is great. But what really tops it off and makes that £150 price tag worth it, it's got to be the Synapse software. I, I have really enjoyed using it, I've been using it for quite a while now, and I just don't find myself pulling my, my hair out with it. This keyboard has been great. It's well made. The switches on it, for me, I like them. You may not. Now, my personal recommend, my personal, my professional recommendation, shall we say, um, if you are looking at spending 150 pounds on a keyboard like this, I would love to say just go online and buy one. But I don't actually recommend that. What I always say, peripherals and touchy feely, where there is a big sort of difference in personal opinion, go to a computer shop. You can even go to PC World here in the UK and they'll have one of these more than likely sitting on the shelf and you can walk up to it and have a play. Now, I don't mind clicky clacky keys. Some people despise them. Yes, you could put, I think, um, 
I don't think it actually worked with these. The traditional, I haven't tried it. Um, now with cherry switches, you can stick a, a rubber uh, O-ring on your stems, but I don't think you'd actually get away. I don't think that would actually work with these. Um, but yeah, go to a shop, have a play. Now, I love this, you may not. Always personal opinion when it comes to peripherals, but I'm gonna give this keyboard a massive thumbs up. There will be some links down below as to where you can buy one. And if you have any questions or any advice or any recommendations, let me know down in the comments section and I always do my best to answer. So if you've liked this video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, thumbs down, not a problem. If you wanna see more of me, don't forget to click the subscribe button and I will be back the same time next week. On that note, guys, this is the Razer Huntsman, not the Elite. Uh, this is the Razer Huntsman. I'm going to give it a massive thumbs up, and I'll see you all again soon.